Hey guys, this is David Flocken with the Gross Undo's YouTube channel, and this is part two of our flower dissection, so I'm going to go ahead and just get right into it. Some parts of the flower uh, I didn't mention in part one are hidden by the petals, so I'm going to go ahead and remove some of the petals so you guys can see. Okay, so now if we turn the flower on its side, we expose a, a green lump. Let's see if you can see it. Okay. So the green lump is the ovary. So after the stigmas are pollinated, the pollen germinates all the way down into the ovary. And the ovary is divided into three parts in the case of this species, and most of Drosera is three parts. So if we open up the ovary, we will be able to see some seeds or eggs, unfertilized eggs, these little white things. Um, so those, those are developed in the flower way before it ever gets pollinated. And then, if we go ahead and, let's see, turn around, I have a fresh flower here. So if we look at the bottom, there's these five little green things. And they're not always green, even in, even in the same species, even in Capensis, sometimes these are red, or they're longer, or brown. So pretty variable. But those are called the sepals. So in the case of Drosera flowers, they have five petals, five anthers, five stamens, although the stamens can be pretty divided, so it might look like there's more, but they're really just lobes of the same thing. And then on this bottom part of the flower, there's this lump, and that lump is the connection to the flower stalk, which is known as the peduncle, I believe. Kind of an odd name. Well, anyway... Um, I think that's about it, so sometimes when you remove this part of the flower, I'm not sure if I have fine enough instruments, but if, if you were to remove the ovary from this area, we might be able to see the receptacle. Okay, so sort of the plated region beneath the ovaries is... The receptacle right here it's kind of like where the ovaries connect onto the stalk almost but above the sepals so there you have it and i hope you guys find it helpful and in part three we'll probably go over some practices of what you do after you pollinate the flowers and how to track their progress all right thanks guys